I don't know. I'm, I'm less familiar with South Dakota. I'm right next That's door. That's unfortunate. I'm right next door to Come Governor visit Gordon. Us. However, I know Mr. Johnson really well, and he gives me, I've been there, but he gives me all these rave reviews, so I know it's a wonderful <laughs> place. Um, in terms of federal land, uh, do you have a significant issue with wildfire in the, in the summer seasons? We do, but I would say in the Black Hills National Forest is known as one of the best managed forests in our country. It has one of the last successful operating timber industries, and that is because we utilized some mechanisms that were implemented in the last farm bill that I had the chance to work on when I was here in Congress, using good neighbor authority to go out and to do some unique pilot projects to allow us to actually manage our forest in a way that many other people's hands were tied in other areas of our country. So I would say that now we're, we're deeply challenged by what we see coming out of the Forest Service. They're cutting our cubic, um, cubic feet that we can get in timber contracts. Uh, in fact, the last GTR uh, made false assumptions and cut our, 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 our percentage down significantly, uh, I would say a third of what it should be. And that brings incredible risk to our state. Uh, I know Governor Gordon and I have worked extensively on trying to get the Forest Service to revise their analysis and use real scientific data to come up with what we could actually go out there and log in sure. order to utilize the timber. But this is the story of it all. We've got bureaucrats in D.C. making decisions, not on facts on the ground. And what it's doing in the Black Hills is it's going to threaten life. So your point is that the management of the Black Hills has been aids, better. aids uh, the uh, fight against wildfire. Yes, it does. It aids in the fight against wildfire, and that's because we've been able to go around the federal government. Thank we've you. been able to get through some of the rules like this one that's being proposed, cut through that, and still be able to do more than other forests have been able to. But now we see that going away under the Biden administration. Yeah. But Thank listen, you, these... These forests are heavily populated with people and communities. Um, when you have a forest fire come through, you're getting more erosion and waste, uh, dangerous chemicals being released into the atmosphere. If a person was environmentally minded and conservation minded, they would allow us to manage these forests. Thank you for that. When I was there, I reviewed a report, and you know I've got a forestry background that was written not just by bureaucrats, but retired bureaucrats from the Forest Service on how the forest should be managed. And, it was offensive to me from a scientific standpoint. The basis there was no uh, there was no science or knowledge that went into it. It was purely a biased report written to influence how the forest was going to be managed. So it didn't appear to be a great day in the Black Hills with a, a mill closing down, a forest fire raging, and a uh, a new withdrawal from, if you will, from the Forest Service on on land. But you mentioned that. Good Neighbor Authority is working and things mm -hmm. are happening better in the Black Hills. So I know both of you, uh, you utilize the Good Neighbor Authority. Can you talk about how that and other programs that are run by the state can actually make conservation better and make our, uh, our federal lands better? Well, in the Black Hills, we've utilized Good Neighbor Authority to cooperate with other layers of government, uh, with the state, with counties, with outside associations, and we've run incredible projects that have allowed us to go out and manage the forest to make sure that we were considering all aspects of what a successful forest looks like. Um, that's the kind of rules and suggestions and regulations that I believe we should be focusing on in Congress to, to cut strings rather than to tie more onto us to allow us the freedom to look at what specifically is happening in each situation and adapt to that. Um, that was used uh, very successfully for us to defeat and, and push back the pine beetle epidemic that we were dealing with at that time that was making the Black Hills so dangerous, um, and it worked overwhelmingly. Uh, since then, we've seen more and more regulation coming in, specifically the GTR that was put forward by the Forest Service that cut our cubic cord feet was pretty devastating for us to see that it wasn't built on anything on the ground. And that that's what is another aspect that's impacting the Black Hills right now, why we're seeing our mills being threatened and our timber industry struggling. I know Governor Gordon's been deeply involved in this as well as we've been trying to brainstorm and how we can keep the economy going. It's so interesting to me that we import a lot of our lumber from Canada while we have excess lumber here that we just don't allow ourselves to utilize to help support 
our country. And um, now we have lumber from California from burned out wildfires that's being shipped all the way to South Dakota I, I know to that our was, two mills. I, I, I almost Doesn't passed make any out sense. when I heard the solution was to ship in lumber from California. Well, it's actually, they're actually doing it a logs little bit. from California at all that freight. Think of the carbon emissions on that. I absolutely risk people's lives because it will not allow us to manage the Black Hills National Forest and Forest Service lands throughout that area in a way that protects our communities and homes that are there. Uh, we've seen devastating fires um, in the area because it's such a populated forest. If we do not manage it, um, it will increase that risk of wildfire and we will lose people. So the, the rule completely ignores that aspect and doesn't do no al analysis on what public safety ramifications may happen if they follow through on it. you categorically dismiss perspectives because of political party affiliation? Absolutely not. We don't get that ability as governor. As no. a governor, you need to get things done and accomplished and do what's best for people. And we work on a bipartisan basis every single day. Do you feel you're able to listen to an idea or perspective and give it merit based on its... The diversity of that perspective helps us make better decisions. When we hear those different opinions, we make better policy decisions. In the world, everybody matters. It doesn't matter if you're big or small or important or not important. You should listen to them.